specifically for the session I put my Amnesty hat on. Um, I've been working to support uh, Amnesty for a number of years now, together with uh, Björn. Hi Björn, just wave to Björn. <laughs> and uh, uh, Michael. We also have uh, 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 the recent uh, CRM responsible person from Amnesty in the room, Nela. Hi Nela. She's going to check if, uh, if what I tell is correct and probably report if it's not. Um, and uh, basically I want to put on my Amnesty hat and tell you a little bit about the experiences we've had in the last couple of years using Civic Sierra mainly to support fundraising. Uh, whenever you have questions, please shout, raise your hand and don't wait for an official session. Let's make it as interactive as possible. Okay, so what we're going to talk through, um, I've only got 25 minutes, so I'm probably going to skip a few, but um, how did it start? Membership campaigns, mailings and events, talk a little bit about contributions, talk about the Great Leap Forward, CV Banking and CV SAPA, and we'll see if we get any further. So, I've got my mouse here, I'm hoping it can reach. Yeah. How did it all start? Um, a number of years ago, Amnesty was using a homegrown system for their memberships. And that homegrown system was made, uh, it was developed by a volunteer. You might recognize this quite a standard pattern. And uh, unfortunately, the volunteer was leaving, and so they had to change the system. And there was a guy in the Netherlands from Am Amnesty Netherlands who'd heard about CVCRM and said, OK, well, I've probably got something you can use, which is called CVCRM. So we had a migration and a configuration, which obviously was supported by a company which did not belong to the CVCRM community. No one knew them, and they uh, probably didn't check, didn't do things in the way the community would like to do them, uh, so it was quite difficult. They made a couple of migration mistakes, which are very understandable mistakes, but mistakes as well. So we got to the point where we used it for memberships, but we did all sorts of weird and wonderful things that were in the way. And then in uh, at the middle, uh, or the end of 2012, Amnesty International Flanders actually said, we're not using just a membership system, we have a CRM, so we can do more stuff with it. And specifically, we can use it to support fundraising. And we started supporting them in 2013, initially we're just cleaning up a few things, and uh, moved, uh, got more part of the process that led to the situation where we are now, which is, it's not just a system, it's our system which is a very important statement, I think. Uh, and we do continuous support in monthly sprints. So every month I take a train to Brussels from uh, the Netherlands, Björn takes a train to Brussels from Germany, and sometimes Michael takes a train from Devon. And we end up in Brussels. We deal with whatever needs to be done, what we set out in the beginning of the year, what the priorities are, taking into account what's changed in the world, and we do stuff. So let's have a look. Hello. Initially, um, um, we use memberships at Amnesty, but we use free memberships because what we said is actually the membership doesn't, it's a nice marketing tool. But actually, what we have is recurring contributors who we like to donate every month or every year. And if they want to, want to call themselves a member, that's fine. But we don't have a, a voting day or etc. 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 So rather than put on a payment structure for the memberships, we said we'll use free memberships. There's lots of campaigns in CVCRM. Basically, any action Amnesty Flanders takes is a campaign. Um, we use Civi Mail to do mailings, but we also use MailChimp to do mailings. We do some events in CVCRM and recently started doing events with Webform CVCRM integration. And we have an online link 
from the petitions on the web. So on the website from Amnesty, people can sign a petition, and the petition then is automatically processed into CVCRM. Um, and we actually have that working now from a different site as well, because we're separating CVCRM and our public website, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Yeah. Um, what what do you mean? Whether whether which events or which mailings? We didn't. It grew, and we're now taking a more structured approach. So it depended on person A would do a mailing in Civi uh, Mail, and person B would do a mailing in Mailchimp, and event A would be done without any uh, uh, link to Civi CRM, just someone keying it in manually, and event B would be more structured, etc. Yeah. That would be captured, but they would send in an Excel list with the participants, and then the Excel list would be keyed in manually by a volunteer. Yeah? Okay. A big thing was about contributions to city term, donations, if you like, because there was a lot of fundraising that Amnesty uh, that we do. And initially, they were, uh, they, we used Espadon, uh, which is a, another system, to manage the actual payments because they were going through the SEPA European system, so there were special rules and regulations, and at the time, CV SEPA wasn't there yet, so they used Espadon. And we actually paid for the service of getting the money in as well. And we had recurring contributions, conceptually, but they were actually managed as pledges who would be renewed every year, which was one of the migration mistakes, if you like. And we had an interface, a, a, deep, a homegrown interface, to feed the actual payment data into CVCRM. And the whole setup was suffering from a lack of CVCRM expertise, and there was also a lot of manual stuff involved. So, uh, for example, from, uh, there would be an Excel sheet coming in out of Espadon, which would then be keyed into CVCRM by a volunteer. And if one account wasn't correct, the whole Excel sheet would be lying around for a month waiting for that one record to be fixed. I see some nods everywhere. Yeah. So, we got into a project which was labeled the Great Leap Forward. Um, and the base of that, of course, was not a system or IT thing. The base of that was a growing fundraising ambition. Amnesty saying, we can and we will raise more. We will have a, 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 a better understanding, a better ability, increase the fundraising staff, and we expect to grow a lot. Um, we changed to the sprint approach, we changed to regular support, and we focused on developing better systems to support the uh, fundraising stuff. All right, use the clicker, but the clicker didn't work. Okay, now I'll, I'll wait. Um, what we decided to do to say we want direct debits directly in and from City CRM. So rather than have one system where you send our payments and feed our payments from and then key them in manually. We want to do that directly using Civi SEPA for the stream going out and Civi Banking for the bank transactions coming in. And we're going to improve the flow of street import because Amnesty used a lot of street recruitment. So people out on the streets recruiting donors. Um, and there was a, a, a time lapse between the two of about 60 days. So 60 days between the moment when someone signs up on the street and 60 days later the actual first payment comes in. And that could easily be improved. And if you improve that, you're actually almost finding money because you get an additional month of income. And the big thing we're doing at the moment is to separate the public website and CVCRM, which basically um, from a 
module perspective, from a technical perspective, it's very handy that if you have a web form, you can have it integrated with CVCRM. But if you look at it from a security perspective, it's a bit like having your treasury next to your public entrance. Because the data you actually hold is your, your, your gold. And if you were a bank, it would be really weird if you put your gold next door to the public entrance. So we, dis we said we, we really need to separate that. We need to make sure that the public website, which is our entrance hall, is on a separate part of the building and we move the data back to a, another server where we can safely and securely protect it. We're in the middle of doing that. Let me see if the clicker now works. This works. This doesn't. It's okay, this works. So, we now are in a position where we do our own direct debits. So we don't get another company to do our direct debits for us. We don't pay them anymore, we just do it ourselves. Civi Banking reads, interprets and processes bank files, bank statements coming in, matches them automatically, if possible. And Civi SEPA allows the recording of SEPA mandates donate recurring contributions and sends them to the bank so we can get the payments in again. And from where we are now, we've been using City Banking for almost two years now and City Sapa for about one and a half year. Uh, and we're really happy with it. It works. Unlike some things. Street report, street recruitment. I've already explained to you the time lapse between street recruitment and the first direct debit was between 60, it was a little, little worse even, between 65 and 93 days. And um, there were a lot of steps involved, some of them manual, as I explained, so it would be an Excel sheet coming in and someone keying over the data. And together with Amnesty, Björn and I developed a street import extension which imports CSV files. CSV files are being sent from street recruitment suppliers. And they automatically create a contact, if there's not already a contact, create activities like this is a street recruitment and uh, for the obligatory welcome call a couple of days later, this is the welcome call. It creates memberships if the person being recruited said they wanted to be a free member, an Amnesty fan. It adds the contacts to the relevant groups to send the newsletters and check them for deduping and that sort of stuff. And it auto automatically creates SEPA mandates and the link to recurring contributions. So all this manual labor has been taken out of the equation, is now done automatically on a daily basis. And the time lapse we have now between the moment of recruiting and the first direct debit is between 25 and 38 days. And the 25 looks like a lot, but they're actually what's required to do the whole SEPA process and get the mandate approved, etc, etc, etc. But from 65 to 25 is a big, big improvement. What we did experience when we were doing that, that was quite difficult, uh, strangely enough, to get these suppliers to uh, send consistent data. So sometimes you get the date format starting with the day, and sometimes you get it starting with the year, and then a week later you get a completely different field in there, and all sorts of tricks like that, which surprised us a bit because we thought it would be more advanced. But we've made all sorts of uh, validations to highlight those differences and get error systems going and automatically create error activities for the admin staff if something weird happens, etc, etc. And the ambition for our next steps is to be able to record more loading types. And what I mean there is at the moment we can do street recruitment and we can do a welcome call. 
So the street recruitment is the moment that you sign up on the street and the welcome call follows a couple of days later to say, are you, do you still want to donate, etc. But of course we also have uh, uh, data coming in from telemarketing centers and we have data coming in with corrections and we have data coming in through other stuff. So what we want to be able to do is change this extension to make it even more flexible so we can cope with many different types of records which do many different things. And ideally we would want to get to a web service system where we could have a web service to say this is a new street import. So the supplier could then, in theory, use their iPad and rather than feed it into their system and then process a CSV file to send to our system, they could immediately call a web service. Technically that's not very complicated. We haven't done it yet because we want to make sure we actually get consistent data before we do. Because if there's still lots of inconsistencies, then it's easier to process a CSV file and say, ah, this record I will just park and, and, and tell you about, rather than have a web service which requires immediate action. Any questions so far? Naila, you, you can probably better tell that. Can I give you that one? So we're having two collection dates on the 7th and on the 21st of every month. Um, when we sign, send out files for the 7th, this one is a bigger file than uh, for, the, for the second. Um, I need to scratch my memory <laughs> to, to know how many there are. But, um, Probably, yeah. Twenty thousand around ish. That's that's hard there. Yeah. <laughs> how big do I need to? How busy? How, how big? Yeah. How big? How many hours? How many is that? Send it, collecting, yeah, just creating the file, uh, uploading it to your bank. Yeah. That uploading stuff is um, an hour at the most. Um, getting in and collecting the bank statements is a daily job. Every every day we we collect the bank statements and upload them. Uh, and there is another person doing that for us. Uh, another member of our team uh, is doing that daily. Any more? Let me get to the next one. How am I doing on time? Is anyone checking? Oof. Okay, this is a nice little thing which I'm going to tell you about uh, very briefly. It's nice in five minutes, but it's really wonderful. It's the Contact Identity Tracker, which is an extension we developed, Björn developed, um, um, and use quite heavily. Um, for example, when you merge contacts, you have a contact who was known as 345 and then you merge him with contact B who was known as 764. And if you now get a payment, if you merge them, then you lose the 345. And if you then get a bank file in saying, I'm a payment for contact 345, that payment goes wrong because it doesn't know where to go anymore. So the contact identity tracker allows you to find the contact with more identities. So you can say, well actually 756 was also known as 345. So if a payment comes in, it will find 756 with 345. Yeah? Is that clear? Very small, very useful. Um, we use it in a number of projects now. So if you're interested, please look it up. Contact Identity Tracker. We also uh, re require this for our, uh, which is the contact matcher, we use for the uh, petition stuff, where we have petitions coming in, but um, we then you have the standard CVD dupe process, which can take care of deduplication. 
But however, really, when you look at it, there's actually two processes. One is matching, and the other one is deduplication. And the matching is finding the right contact, rather than trying to delete one of them. So we have a matching, a contact matcher, which can find a contact by one of their identities, which could be an email address, etc., etc. So as I'm running out of time, if you want to know any more about this, check with me or with Björn, and we can tell you more. Okay, I'm done. I'm going to hand over my microphone for the next session, but I'm going to ask you if there's any more questions before I do. No? Well, thanks for listening, and uh, hope you enjoy the next session. <laughs>